G'day, Dylan here. I just opened my observatory and there's moths everywhere. That's really sad. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys about mounts uh, because a lot of you have asked about the CGX and my experience with the CGX and to be honest, I love it. It really changed my astrophotography. It's a super stable mount, it's steady, it can do long exposures, guided or unguided even. Um, the only criticism I would have is that, that weird noise, right? The CGXs are known for screaming like banshees sometimes when they're slewing and it's not always that way but um but every now and then you get a bit of a squawk which um sounds horrible but actually makes no difference to anything except maybe the peace and serenity of your neighbors but ever since i got into the hobby i always wondered why mounts in general are such simple machines they don't seem to have a lot of brains even though they do something really remarkably technical uh, so i've always had these ideas in my head about what kind of mount I would design if I was clever enough to design a mount. I'm just going to draw my ideal mount. Uh, if money was no object, but physics still is, uh, let's see what sort of a mount we can come up with. Is this actually going to be a real star stuff video or am I just going to do some weird astronomy comedy troll thing? It's about a 50-50 chance at this stage. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Before I jump into it, I'd just like to thank High Point Scientific for sponsoring this video. High Point Scientific are there to help you with your astronomy. I did say Northern Hemisphere last video, but that was a mistake. I'm sorry, that was my bad. Uh, I believe that High Point Scientific service America and Mexico and Canada primarily. So if you are in those countries, do give them a shout out. Uh, they support their equipment and they are there to help you with your astronomy. So you can ask them questions about what you're trying to achieve. Uh, but also they have a price match guarantee. So basically there's no reason why you wouldn't use them if you're there. Okay, so your mount is a tripod, right? With a motor on top. And when you turn it on, it has no idea where it is. Uh, it's pretty dumb. So you have to tell it where on the earth you are with your GPS, then do star alignments so that it knows where the celestial sphere is. And that's also related to the date and time. Some of that can be automatically generated. There are some mounts that have GPS in them. There are some mounts that have date and time saved. Most mounts will have a battery to keep that date and time, uh, but it's still just not as good as my phone. Why does my smartphone do better at this stuff than the mount does? Out of the box, my phone already knows where it is and where to point. Why can't the mount do that? So the first thing I want in my ideal mount is I want it to be self-leveling. Uh, this first axis here needs to be pointing the scope to north or south, the, the south celestial pole or the north celestial pole, and it should be able to level itself. We're expected to level it with a bubble level. There's probably some engineering here that could be patented, but I'm sure there would be some sort of system you could work out with screws or some sort of collimation style leveling screw that could then, uh, if it was within a certain range, sort of level itself. The second thing is the altitude. So that's the uh, degree based on your GPS that it has to be at an angle for in order to point directly to the north or south celestial pole. Um, again, this is something that it should, with its internal GPS, just figure out itself. And that way you can move it anywhere set it up and it will just be all ready to go. And this of course is pointing directly to the North Celestial Pole or the South Celestial Pole. Now, that's the typical equatorial mount setup, right? And we've already identified a few things here that it should be able to do itself. The next thing it needs to do is actually align the scope. And there's two alignments. There's the star alignment, so it figures out where all the stars are. And then there's the actual polar alignment where it locks on to the North Celestial Pole or the South Celestial Pole. Now typically we're required to have a number of different guide scopes. There's the polar scope in here. There's a guide scope typically on top. Maybe even a star sense as well to do that alignment. All of these can be combined into one scope and that scope should be in here. 
like a sort of master guide scope star sense thing and that should do all of it it should be your polar scope it should be your guide scope and it should also be your star sense that one scope mounted there on the deck should be able to do just about everything through software and that would remove the need for having these extra scopes and it would really also reduce the flexure that you get with having a secondary guide scope as well if there was a mount that did all of this we could go to a star party we could travel to a different hemisphere then we could whack any sort of scope on it turn it on and it would automatically be able to know where it is polar align itself star align itself do a multi-point star alignment so it has a really good model of the sky and then when you go to something it'll go to smack bang in the crosshairs just by pushing one button. So that's my other requirement for this, one button. Of course you could have the hand controller if you want to so that you can control it as needed or that could be over Wi-Fi to a phone or whatever uh, and all of this needs to be ASCOM compliant. Are there other bells and whistles that this should have? Of course, it should have the USB hub. It should have power hub. It should have anti-vibration pads built into the bottom of the tripod. Uh, maybe they can be unscrewed and refreshed as needed. Maybe some nice clips and things for cable management. USB-C. If it was really smart, you could even put a Raspberry Pi in here that had an SD card and you could store all your images straight off the telescope straight into the mount itself that way we're not looking at external computers and we're not looking at external devices like the ASI Air everything happens in the mount itself that would really make it a one-stop shop now there are a couple of products that claim to do this there's the I think the it's called the Unistelloscope it's not really geared towards professional astrophotographers it's more geared towards citizen science it looks like an amazing product and one I'd love to review but for those of us who have different telescopes and we want to use our own gear but we want to mount just really just takes all of that thinking away from us and it's not because I don't appreciate what we do as astronomers with knowing about RA and deck and polar alignment and all of that stuff that's all good stuff to know uh, but it seems to me it's 2019 and my phone does a better job of the stuff that the mount should be doing by itself Obviously, telescope companies don't have the economies of scale that smartphone manufacturers do. But this technology is now at such a point because of smartphones that it could be integrated quite simply into a mount. That would make astrophotography and astronomy in general much more accessible to everyone. Because part of the big hurdle, the big learning curve with astronomy is getting to grips with the mount and getting all of this guiding and polar alignment stuff out of the way. And it took me months to years to figure that stuff out. And it's the most common question that you get in forums or from beginners is how do you get over all of that stuff before you can even begin to start taking photos. Well, that's about it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you liked my crazy Homer Simpson style mount design. But if you have any suggestions about what you'd like to see in a mount, leave them down below. Part of the reason for making this video is that if you put ideas out there on the global internet and then someone goes to try and patent them later. You can show that this idea was out in the wild first, so it becomes harder to patent. So if any of my ideas are good enough to become products, then maybe it will stop people from being able to patent them and that makes them available for everyone. I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. Thanks again for tagging me in your photos. I do enjoy seeing them. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.